This is Antergos 18.2 with the XFCE desktop. Antergos is based on Arch Linux. It's probably the most prominent Arch installer. Once you install Antergos, you get essentially pure Arch, but with a pre-configured front-end and desktop interface provided by Antergos. Now, I tried the Mate desktop, but I couldn't get rid of the desktop icons. There may be a way I wasn't able to figure it out, so I got rid of that, and I installed the XFCE desktop. There's also Gnome, Cinnamon, and a few others. Now, I've configured this the way I like it. It didn't come this way. I altered the bottom panel, which looks something like a little dock. I got rid of that, and I installed this bottom panel, which showed desktop on the left, the window buttons or taskbar in the middle, and the workspace switcher on the right. And on the top panel, in addition to adding a lot of launchers here, I installed the whisker menu, and I turned that with the categories on the left the way I like it. The whisker menu wasn't available by default, but I was able to download it. It came with what's called the main menu, which is a cascading menu. And I made some changes over here in the system tray. I added the sound icon, I added the battery icon, and I changed the time and date application. It was a simple clock. And for the background, I downloaded a background from Google Images. It didn't come with much of a selection. But that's the beauty of XFCE. You can alter it the way you want to. So I want to make a few observations here as I look through the menu. For accessories, it came with Application Finder, Archive Manager, Bulk Rename, Calculator, Disks, HP Device Manager, Mousepad, Screenshot, Task Manager, Thunar File Manager, and XF Burn. For development, it came with CMake, Qt4 Assistant, Qt4 Designer, Qt4 Linguist, Qt4 Dbus Viewer, and then Qt Assistant, which is Qt5, Qt Designer, Qt Linguist, and Qt Dbus Viewer. Now, under Education, I have LibreOffice Math, but it didn't come with LibreOffice. I installed that. Under Graphics, it has Document Viewer, which is a PDF viewer. Image Scan for Linux I install. That includes the drivers for my Epson scanner, which I had no trouble at all getting out of the repositories. And it also has LibreOffice Draw, but again, I installed LibreOffice. And it has Ristretto Image Viewer. Under Internet, it has the Avahi SSH Server Browser, Avahi VNC Server Browser, eLinks, Firefox. Uh, by the way, on the installer, I had a choice of installing Firefox or Chromium, and I chose Firefox. It has LFTP, which is used for sending and receiving file transfers, and it has Transmission, which is a BitTorrent client. Under Multimedia, I installed Caden Live, version 17.12. I installed MuseScore 2, which is version 2.1, both the latest. It had Parole Media Player, it had Praha Music Application, it had Pulse Audio Volume Control, and the Qt V4 L2 Test Utility. I installed Simple Screen Recorder from the repository, and I installed the VLC Media Player, and I'll get back to that. There was a problem there. Uh, it came with XF Burn. Now, let me just go into VLC Media Player. It works fine now, but when I first installed it, it wouldn't run at all. And let me open 
PAMIC, which is Ad Remove Software, and search for VLC, and I'll explain what happened. Now you notice I have the phonon qt 4 vlc dependency installed, but at first it wouldn't work. It was looking for this dependency, but it wasn't finding it, and the reason for that is this came with the phonon qt 5 vlc dependency installed, but this particular version of VLC wanted the Qt4 version, so it wasn't loading properly. This is one of the potential pitfalls of Arch, and that is that certain applications upgrade in a different sequence from other applications, and they may bring with them dependencies that do not work with the dependencies required by other applications. So, to solve this problem, I uninstalled the Phonon Qt 5 VLC dependency and I installed the Qt 4 version. Now, I haven't tried, but this may in fact break some of the other applications that are installed in this distribution, but it works fine with VLC and that's what I was interested in. So, now going on to Office. Uh, it came with the Events Document Viewer, but with no Office Suite installed, and I installed LibreOffice from the repositories. And this is LibreOffice 6, which came out just a few days ago. It's already in the repositories. And of course, this is the spreadsheet. Uh, the repositories contained two versions of LibreOffice. This is LibreOffice Fresh, which is version 6, and it also had LibreOffice Still, which is the older version 5.4 something. I was able to install LibreOffice on my internal system by downloading a deb package but uh, this is the first time I've found it in a repository, and this is in the Arch repositories. So going on to settings, this is one of those long ones, so I'm going to extend my whisker menu. I'm still going to have to scroll down. It has accessibility, add remove software, which as I said is the PAMIC software manager, Adobe Flash Player, that was one of the things I was able to get upon installation. I normally don't use Adobe. I know it's a terrible security risk, but some of the videos that I watch on websites are available only for Adobe still, so I have it. Appearance, of course you can set the appearance, desktop display, file manager, and this is Thunar keyboard, light lock settings. I changed those so my screen wouldn't constantly lock. Mime type editor, mouse and touchpad, network connections, notifications, panel, this is customizing the panel, power manager, I changed those so that it stays on, preferred applications, print settings, Qt5 settings, removable drives and media, Session and Startup Settings, Editor Settings, Manager, Software Update, Window Manager, Window Manager Tweaks, and Workspaces. And under System, again, I have Add Remove Software. It's a bit redundant. The Avahi Zero Conf Browser, Bulk Rename, Deconf Editor, HTOP, Manage Printing, Print Settings, Software Update, Task Manager, Thunar File Manager, again, and the XFCE Terminal. Let me just open HTOP. Bear in mind that I have Simple Screen Recorder running, and I'm using 551 megabytes of memory and zero swap. I have 3.74 gigabytes of memory 
available. So this is a medium weight desktop, but it's the lightest weight one that I find usable for production because it has Windows Snap and other features that I find productive. Getting back to the drivers I installed, I installed the image scan for Linux, which is used by Epson. So I'm going to search for iScan. And this is what I was able to install. iScan and iScan data were both in the community repositories, but the iScan plugin for my scanner, which is a Perfection V300, was only available in the AUR. And this points out another thing about Arch. Arch has an enormous number of applications available. However, that's only true if you use the AUR. If you use only the regular repositories, the number of applications is considerably more limited. And there's a risk using the AUR because some of the packages in the AUR are not properly maintained. They may be defective in some way. You frequently get warnings. So using Arch in general is risky because you can't do much without the AUR. However, I must say that I've never had a serious problem. If I look for the other driver I installed, I'm going to search for my brother printer other dash h l l and here it is brother dash h l l 2320 d i found that without any problems whatsoever but again it's in the aur so that's just a quick look at Antargos 18.2 with the xfce desktop it was a 1.9 gigabyte download if memory serves, that's a somewhat smaller download than has been required in the past because Antergos comes with the option for installing several different desktops. That may simply be because it downloads a lot online while you're installing it, and you definitely need an internet connection to install it properly. But it has everything I need for production, and it has the latest software which I prefer, so this is definitely a good option from my point of view. This is XRAM Tech. Thanks for watching.